Making Spätzl by Tom Zabadell. Well, the first thing I need to do is to admit that in our family we have Americanized that word Spätzl and we tend to call these Spätzlis with an S on the end. And uh, so either way you pronounce it, this is a wonderful food that we have grown up with in our family and we'd like to share it with the rest of our family and others as interested. We acknowledge that Laura Lee Zabito was the director of photography on this project. And we would state most lovingly that this is in memory of Marion Zabito, my mom, who lovingly made this wonderful recipe for our family countless times. Love you, Mom. The ingredients, they're fairly simple. The way we make spätzles is with just four ingredients. Two cups of all-purpose flour. We just dip it out and put it in the bowl. A half cup of cold water. Make sure it's cold. We usually get it out of the dispenser of the refrigerator and make sure it's cold so it doesn't start to work on the flour before you're ready. Three eggs. That's a little more than some recipes, but we use three eggs, and I think that's why these egg noodles, as they're sometimes called, they're so thick and gooey because there's a lot of egg in this recipe relative to the amount of cold water and flour. And then a half teaspoon of salt. That's it. Just those four ingredients. And that's all we've ever used to make specialties in our family for decades. And for that reason, I like to think of this as one of the real peasant foods. That is, something yummy that can be made from some of the most basic food ingredients. What could get any more basic than these four ingredients? and how good these are and how much we enjoy them. Let's move on. Okay, here we are on the kitchen counter with all the ingredients surrounding our mixing bowl. And the first thing that we have to admit is that we're making a double recipe when you see us putting this stuff together. We like these too much to just make a single recipe usually it's doubled. That's why you see six eggs in that measuring cup and there's a full cup of water and so on. So let's see how we put these together. So here we go. We're putting things together. First we're putting the flour in the bowl and that's I think uh, the eggs following six eggs and next we're going to put in a full teaspoon of salt because we're doubling the recipe. So here we go. Something like that. And lastly, the full cup of water, doubling the recipe and putting in a full cup of ice cold water. Now I'm about to use a whisk and I don't know why I did that because I normally use a spoon, but I uh, grabbed a whisk instead. And as you'll see, I'm going to get in trouble here eventually using the whisk, but the whole idea is just to blend everything together to until it's homogenous. But I uh, picked up a whisk by mistake. Use a big spoon. I usually use a big plastic spoon to stir this all together and a lot of times you got to be careful that you get all of that flour up off the bottom because there you see how it's down in there you got to get down get it all blended together so because I used a whisk here I'm going to have to uh, pound it on the side of the bowl here several times to get it out of there and uh, this was a one take video, so do not do this part, use a spoon. And we'll now continue with a spoon, which I'll go get across the kitchen. 
and here we are there's more what we typically use we can turn that over and get it homogeneous there now this is a time when you've got to decide because we haven't so precisely measured the flower and the eggs come in different sizes even though they may always say large that you don't get the consistency you always want and that's a little too thick we don't want stuff runny but we don't want it so thick and gooey that it won't flow for us so this is when I get a little more water perhaps and just start stirring more water in until I get a consistency that is flowing a little flowing a little not runny just flowing so there we're seeing how it drops in I decide just a little more and you'll see the importance of that as we put these through the spitzel or spatzel maker you got to have something that's going to go through that without being so thick and clumpy I'd rather have it just a little runny than too thick and that's something you'll get accustomed to with time but that's beginning to look pretty good yeah I like that see how that kind of flows and yep there that's pretty good so we move on and when it's in the bowl like that if it's too thick it will stay clumpy but this kind of levels out you see how that goes that's a that's a good example of just the right consistency of this very thick egg heavy dough that we're going to make into spetzelies this is a spetzely maker and my mom never had this she always cut the dough off of the edge of a plate into boiling water but you're going to see that this spatulate maker or spatzel maker is so quick so easy and they're inexpensive you can look this up online or find it in many stores and they're maybe ten dollars or less for this little gadget that will be a thrill to use for your whole lifetime so I put this picture in to remind me to tell you don't put that over the boiling water until you're just ready to use it because you don't want the dough to set up any more than it will already while you're putting it through these holes so keep the spatula maker off to the side don't leave it sitting on the boiling water I don't put any salt in the boiling water some recipes say put a little salt in this is just plain boiling water that we've got on the stove and so we're going to go through with the process now of processing that dough into the specialties here we go there's the water boiling as soon as we put that on I start spooning this stuff into the specialty maker and this stuff is like glue so uh, we keep spooning it in there till we get it about full in that little container and then watch the miracle of this little gadget back and forth back and forth and look at the specialties dropping into the water and they set up so quickly you would think they would start to stick together but they don't they don't and since we have a double batch it's going to take a few times of doing that and that container uh, the boiling water is going to be quite full of these as they cook they start to flow to the top you can see I'm kind of a messy cook but I do clean up after myself so Karen thinks it's okay to be messy as look at it's falling through and as soon as it hits that hot water they start to set up they do not clump together I'm amazed by that and we go back and forth and back and forth and keep filling up that little container now there you have it you see how this is runny enough dough that it's kind of dripping through those holes before you even work at it that's fine that's fine Just 
Anything it takes to get individual pieces of dough. People call these egg dumplings sometimes. But we know them as specialties. There. Back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And we've got the water on high boiling, but with all of this dough going into the water, it's not boiling now. It's taking its time. So there you have it. That's what it looks like. And before we go over to the sink, we'll just kind of stir those around and let them cook for three to five minutes is all it takes. Okay, now we go over to the sink. And this is one of the most important parts of the recipe. This dough is so gooey that if you don't immediately clean it off, you will have quite the job of cleaning up later. So while the specialties are coming back to a boil, you have time with cold water. We've got this on the coldest water we can get. We are rinsing it off. And see how easy it comes off when it's fresh like this and you haven't let it dry on? If you wait to do this till after your meal, you will be sorry. So don't do it. So there you go. And run a lot of water down the sink too while you're doing this because that will dilute all of that heavy gooey um, specialty dough. And you can rinse it right down and away. I'm going to go back and hit that specialty maker again and take it apart because it's time well spent. Okay. There you have it. Now, meanwhile, back on the stove, that's what they're starting to look like. And while we were cleaning the utensils, they came back to a boil. And when they do that, you know they've been cooked long enough. And they're ready to drain. So, here we have it again. Stir it around. And we're ready to take them over to the sink, I think, in a second here. And drain them in a strainer. That's the way we do it. Some people like to... Okay, all right, here it goes. Now, we take them over. I pour them in a strainer. Some people talk about scooping them out of the boiling water, but I like to do this. There's a lot of these for our double batch there. In there, in there. That's hot water to keep them hot and rinse them. There. And I just shake it around so that they're well rinsed. Now some people will just leave them like that and use them immediately like that but I don't like to do that because they can clump together into a wad then you gotta run them through hot water again so I do this I let them drain for just a second and then I pour some oil on them there they're pretty well drained some people I see in some recipes use melted butter I just use a little canola oil that won't impart any flavor and just toss it around. That way they will not clump together no matter what. They'll stay nice and they're ready for whatever use you're going to have of them. Okay, there they are in a bowl. There they are. And We've also prepared a piece of pork and sauerkraut and we always put caraway seeds in the sauerkraut and bake that. Yum. And then we cut up that big piece of pork and we put some pork on the plate. I've almost buried the specialties in sauerkraut. I like to put sauerkraut right on top of the specialties and then more sauerkraut 
on top of the meat. So, uh, but that combination of pork and sauerkraut and spetzlies is one of our favorite ways of using spetzlies. But we also have at times made them instead of noodles to put into soups. We use them instead of noodles at times when we make a family favorite sour broughton. My folks used to take these that were left over and they'd put them in a frying pan and fry them up so they'd get a little more firm and then pour scrambled eggs and scramble eggs right into these and eat that combination. So you can probably find a number of ways to use spetchlies anytime you have a recipe that calls for noodles or egg noodles. Uh, spetchlies are a great substitute. Well, das ist ganz gut. And if I spelled it right, that is very good. And we're going to just end this by saying Auf Wiedersehen.